Hello, um, it's my pleasure to address you all uh, on this very pertinent topic of the safer chemicals. Uh, chemicals make jobs and life in general a lot easier. Chemicals help cleaning and degreasing, or on the other hand, greasing and lubrication, in other words, making machines run better. Fuels are chemicals, not to mention plastics. In agriculture, spraying of chemicals is many times faster and arguably more effective for killing weeds than weeding by hand. So chemicals are fantastically useful. They serve a myriad of purposes that make our lives more comfortable, easy and cleaner. Virtually no business sector can operate without chemicals. And we humans are very inventive. Approximately 15,000 new chemicals are designed and conceived every day. Most don't make it to the marketplace because we have hundreds of thousands of chemicals and mixtures in use in the EU market. Generally, the intentions are excellent for better products, better services, better protection of crops. Unfortunately, many chemicals are hazardous by nature and may lead to irreversible damage to humans and the environment, putting at risk not only current, but also future generations. The European Union's policy approach has always been to offer the highest level of protection of human health and the environment, but also to stimulate innovation and competitiveness of the European industry. The current chemicals legislation, including REACH and CLP, and the sector of product-specific legislation is the result of 50 years of joint efforts to assess and manage chemicals safely for our citizens and environment. Fast forward to today, REACH and other legislations are fully operational. They have been successful in reducing the risk from chemicals that we have regulated. Besides legislation, European Union's research and innovation funds have been steadily increasing over the past 20 years and have strongly contributed to gain more knowledge on chemical hazards and risks, which is crucial to allow us to regulate chemicals, but also to boost research and innovation on substances and materials which are safer and more sustainable. In the past years, European Commission has assessed whether our tools are effective in reaching our policy objectives. Recent policy evaluations give us a very complete picture of the achievements and gaps of the EU chemicals policy. They show that in the European Union, we have probably the most advanced and protective chemicals legislation in the world. However, they also show that we cannot be complacent. A growing number of hazardous substances are found in ecosystems, as well as in human blood, including in fetuses and children, are associated with increasing diseases and biodiversity loss. 74% of the tonnage of the chemicals of, on the EU market are hazardous to health, and the figure is not declining. 90% of citizens are worried about the environmental impact of chemicals in everyday products, and that is shown from Eurobarometer of 2017. The world is failing to meet the 2020 goal for the sound management of chemicals. So Europe needs to strengthen its capacity to produce and use chemicals in a sustainable and competitive way to gain global market, as well as to promote safe and sustainable solutions. Chemical production worldwide is expected to double by 2030 and harm to humans and environment will only exacerbate if adequate policy measures are not in place. This is why the Commission has committed in European Green Deal, adopted in December, to come forward with a chemical strategy for sustainability as part of an overall ambition to zero pollution for toxic free environment. The Green Deal has defined the key objectives of the strategy to protect citizens and environment better against hazardous chemicals and encourage innovation for the development of safe and sustainable alternatives. For this, we need, in particular, to simplify and strengthen the legal framework and to rapidly reflect scientific evidence on chemical risks. With the ongoing COVID crisis, this strategy becomes even more important for three reasons. One, protecting human and planetary health is finally at the core of the political agendas. Protecting from hazardous chemicals will increase resilience to interconnected health and environmental crisis. 
Two, chemicals are widely used across all economic sectors. The strategy will give a crucial contribution to the EU's economic and social recovery. And three, it is increasingly evident that some chemicals are essential for the good functioning of our society. For example, for producing pharmaceuticals and medical devices. The strategy can contribute to the strengthening of EU's strategic autonomy to those essential chemicals. The strategy will include a comprehensive mix of regulator and non-regulator instruments to promote five overarching objectives. All those objectives are about moving towards safer chemicals, but let me stress a few crucial aspects. First, we will not move to safer chemicals without stronger legislation to protect health and, and environment. Despite the achievements of chemical legislation in Europe, not all citizens are protected equally. Not all chemical risks are addressed. We urgently need to step up action, in particular to strengthen the protection of vulnerable groups, to address the combined effects of chemicals, to ensure the sound management of endocrine disruptors, and to tackle persistent substances such as PFAS. Second, we need innovation to do things differently, and we strongly need to encourage that type of innovation and the competitiveness of our industry. Despite our best efforts, substitution of hazardous substances has not happened at the required pace. Most substances on the Europe market are still hazardous to health and to environment, and front runners who produce and use chemicals more safely still encounter major economic technical barriers. Europe has the scientific and technical capacity to lead the transition to safe chemicals and non-chemical alternatives from design to end of life. But transition to safe by design needs stronger policy support. This means a stronger regulatory framework, which sets high standards and predictable rules for those who want to invest into European Union also financial support to drive research, development and commercialization of safe alternatives and win market barriers. Three, we need to ensure coherence across policy objectives and legislation. We need that to ensure that we protect consistently and that we do not trade health and environment protection with other goals. This is, for instance, very relevant for the circular economy agenda, whereas its key objectives in terms of resource use will not be met if we don't ensure non-toxic material cycles and therefore clean loop. Fourth uh, aspect is that we need more and better knowledge on chemicals. We need that so that authorities, industry and consumers can make informed choices. We need more data on the volumes and on users on chemicals placed on the market and more research to understand their fate and impacts on the human environment. But we also need better skills at all levels. We need them to turn this knowledge into practice and inform decisions of all actors. Finally, if we want safer chemicals, we cannot stop at European borders. We need the EU to become more and more example worldwide on sound management of chemicals, setting international standards and supporting third countries to put in place mechanisms, rules and infrastructures for ensuring the same level of protection. We have the biggest single market in the world. Our rules should be strictly enforced and drive the push to a safe by design agenda worldwide. The chemical strategy is expected for later this year. We have just published a roadmap on which all stakeholders will be able to give a feedback. You are all encouraged to give your feedback via this possibility. The adoption of the strategy will certainly not be the end of the process. After the adoption, we will need to implement it and to follow it up with relevant legal and non-legal initiatives. It is a long journey where we'll all be in together. Protecting our planet and our shared environment is our generation's defining task. It is an urgent moral, human and political obligation, which Europeans have resoundingly told us they want the, the union to fulfill. It is also a long-term economic imperative. Those who act first and fastest will be the ones who grasp the opportunities of ecological transition. This is a quote from Commission President's letter to Vice President Timmermans, who is responsible uh, for the sustainability. And that applies to everyone else. With this, 
I would like to thank you for your attention and I wish you all the good discussion. Have a nice day.